vibrations move. An NG. You got it. I think you can be trained and you can improve your ear and you can learn some technique. But I think the voice itself, whether it's a beautiful instrument and how unique it is, is something that you're born with. What's a great singer? That's a subjective question. What's beautiful to one person may not be beautiful to someone else. I very often hear someone, I think, God, that's a really wonderful instrument, and I wish I could play with that instrument. and. Um, develop it to its full potential. Almost every time. Okay. okay, so now bend your knees, put your hands on your ribs. The external intercostals contract, right? Then you start to exhale. You feel the obliques. You feel the internal intercostals. A singer is, is a vocal athlete. There are so many technical things to work on and they have to be able to do each one of these things safely. Anchor by putting your shoulder blades back in. What the body is doing has a direct effect on the voice. Just notice the movement, that you use movement in the front, the back ribs are moving towards the floor, and yet they're widening against the floor, okay? So on the next breath, if you think of your body as a clock, you start at 12 o'clock, and they go all the way down to say three o'clock. If it is not aligned properly, if there is tension in the body, all of this will interfere with the respiratory process. You're just gonna whisper, Good. Then whisper, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And again. One, two, three, four, five. Good. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Very good. The singers are very stressed and they're on 24 seven. And it's very interesting because their emotions show up in their voice. So when you sometimes just throwing yourself on the floor like this is a good idea. It's good for me, I think. Yeah. Because I'm so tense. That's funny. Because I'm such a type A personality. You think you're... My studio, it's a very small room. They don't feel they have to project. They're not on mic. Everything is very personal. It makes in the right place. Forgot how to kill. <laughs> okay, but you gotta It's good for them to be able to unload, whether it's fear or doing too much. It's in a very safe environment. When I was doing Rocky Horror, I was just going by the seat of my pants. I, knew, I, knew, I could do that, and I could sing eight shows a week. And I actually saw you do, I saw you do Doing it. I just, that. But I didn't I know couldn't. You. We didn't know each other then. Uh, you and I started working together when I did company. Yeah. I was backing into musicals because they wanted me for my acting, but I was learning how to sing each role on the spot. And so with Rocky, I noticed I could scream. I'd be like, wow, every eight shows a week. But I couldn't sing a ballad if you paid me. Hmm. So is that healthy? Probably not. No. <laughs> That's why we do all this cross-training. Right. That's why I make you sing legit things. We do legit and we do rock. Yeah. And, we do. And, and it's really important that you mix it. Inside the breeze. singer is the instrument, and yet they play the instrument. It's a three-part system. There's the respiratory, which has to do with inhalation and exhalation. The source is where the sound is made. The filter is the vocal tract. And if the body is not working optimally, you're not going to be able to produce sounds safely. Hold your breath, move your hand, hold your breath, hold your breath.
There you go. What's it feel like? I feel open. I think it's a really individual process. You try things. You, you're always looking for the window to open, and then you think, okay, that's how I'll start. One of the plans might be to address their jaw, their tongue, their neck. I might notice that the airflow is limited. Sometimes it's to increase range. There are so many technical things to work on, and the most challenging part of it is to encourage while teaching very specific things. Because some people just say, I just don't, I just don't feel it anymore. I'm so worried. Well, that's my job, to make sure that they still feel the same joy. If I happen to stagger and fall behind, Will you help me to fight love? Will you help me to walk? Will you ease my mind? Will you bring me to light? I know you will try to help me find my way, love. Nights are long if you hold me till it's light. light. Wasn't that interesting? Yes, it was immediately in my breath. I mean, immediately, was... your breath, you don't have to think, you don't no. have to breathe anymore. You I just, didn't have to breathe. It breathes for you. So, how can I do that all the time? You just moved your legs a lot. It made a huge difference. That was really great. Yeah. It was good. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're Yeah, I, my voice just feels like it's coming back. I think your voice sounds great. Yeah, it's coming. Okay. <laughs> so I have a long-term goal for them, and then I have short-term goals. And so I have to see if I can stretch them in some ways, and that can affect some sort of change. Very often I'm called in to performances to see if I think that they are producing sound correctly. We have some shows that are just impossible. School of Rock is one of those shows where they literally are screaming, jumping, playing instruments, singing at the very top of their register. The most typical is when somebody is doing eight shows a week and they're afraid they want to make sure that they're not going to lose their voice by the end of the week. Okay, oh, there we go. Okay, <laughs> so we haven't sung in a while. <laughs> That's it. The vibrato is right too. <laughs> really good. <laughs> I was always very musical, but I just never thought I was a singer with the instrument that other people had. But I enjoyed it. I played, you know, I played piano. I played a few other instruments, and uh, I just was always interested in the theater. One, two, three, I did a lot of theater jobs. I did lots of voiceovers. One, two, three, two, one. One, two, three, I think I was afraid of not working. And then I realized that's not really what I was interested in, and I started to really study techniques, and that's when I went back to graduate school in speech pathology. At the time, I was working in an office with another speech pathologist, and whenever there was a singer that was in trouble, he said, well, you, you see them because you sing. And so they were sent to me, and that's how it was by word of mouth, and that's really how I got started. Say you were hissing like a cat. Yeah, you stop Like that out air. or in? In. So you stop the breath. It's like a fight or flight thing. You're going, hey, hey. That's it. So it's a full retraction. Off the breath. Hey! Hey! Yes, it's like cheering at a football game. Yeah, it's a yeah. very different sound. So if you sang that, hey, 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 not very hard though, is it? I don't know that there is a real approach. So I sort of was going step by step, sort of making this up. It's amazing. <laughs> One more. Share pose for me. Okay, what? Okay, here you go. 
I've studied Pilates, I've done yoga, I've studied Alexander technique. You have to feel your feet rooted in the ground. You have to feel where your pelvis is lined up. And then you have to really feel each vertebra so that your head is basically floating off your spine, your ears are over your shoulders, your jaw is relaxed and heavy. May I go? Good. Did you hear the difference? Oh. Yeah. Okay. How are your kids? They're amazing. And I get asked all the time, actually, when can children start singing? You know, yeah, and, I, and what I always say is they can sing as much as they want as long as no one's manipulating their tone until they're older. It's true. You know, I just got a call about a, you know, uh, it, it depends. When you get um, a kid that's in a show, that's thrown in a show and they're eight years old, yeah. you don't want them to get hurt. That's right, right. So, so that's a different... So that's, 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 but that's teaching them how to do what they're already going to do and protect them. That's right. But that's I've trained many intelligence singers intelligence who start intelligence. at a very young age, so and I see that they're going to develop into a great singer. You have to teach someone to use their voice in a healthy manner, but it may vary from, from one type of singing to another. In other words, a Broadway belter is very different from training an opera singer. It takes a long time, and some of them have a drastic change. Well, well, they'll explain. Hi. I'll be watching. Hi. Who's there? You guys are matching. I know we did I not know. do this on purpose. Why did you? You wore the wrong color. I know. What am I doing? What, what you, you didn't I'll tell you, one of the most rewarding shows that I worked on was Billy Elliot. Here I had these young boys whose voices were changing so rapidly, and they were ballet dancers. Just to watch them grow up and see what they could do was, I think, one of the most exciting times. Him. His. His. Hyde. Hyde. Holy. Holy. Humanitarian. Humanitarian. How are you? How are you? How are you? How are you? Good. You know, most of us come to you, you are sort of a master at diagnosing um, where we've kind of gone off the rails or gone off the tracks. I had just played Glinda for quite an extensive period and I was like talking like this. I okay. basically mm -hmm. was talking like Linda. I was sort of not just vocally but in my life um, kind of wearing a costume and we took the costume away. That was dramatic. That was very, very dramatic. <laughs> Why would you want um, to not support your voice for speaking the same way you would for singing? Amen. If I talk to you like, like this, it's very, it's vocal folds that are coming together, but they're very floppy. And I would say every college kid I see now talks to me like this. So that's what we really worked on. Take straw. Oh, straw. straw time. Let's blow some bubbles. Beautiful. See how long you can do it for. Fill it opening. So what you're going to feel are anchoring head and neck, anchoring torso. This is all I did before, after I had the baby, I remember? remember? Yeah. <laughs> it was like a week of this. Mm -hmm. I like people to develop their musicality and not feel like things are so rigid that they stop exploring. Seeing someone get on stage, feel confident, just watching the, the final product. It's an adventure that I get to follow them.
good. Okay.